No man has the right to be an amateur in the matter of physical training. It's a shame for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable. Socrates said this. And if you're a software engineer, you know, it's no surprise that every day we sit a long time. <laughs> More often than not, we're sitting rather than standing or moving around. According to some research, on average, the average office worker, which would categorize us software engineers, sits 7.7 .7 hours a day. And the bad thing about like being inactive and sitting down so much is that we are more susceptible to bad health habits. So burning fewer calories because of inactivity, lack of physical fitness, eating more unhealthy food, snacking, for example. I'm a big snacker myself. Losing our muscle mass from inactivity and having poor blood circulation too. We also suffer from nasty diseases like heart disease, diabetes, like the list goes on. But the main thing from all the sitting that we're doing is we might be prematurely shortening our lives because of this inactivity. It's not necessarily the sitting itself, but it is um, the other negative health consequences that could be linked towards all that sitting. Because when you sit more, you're more inactive and you know the whole cycle continues. Now, an antidote to that, at least I, I feel like that, is being more physically fit. And as a software engineer, I, I really want to kind of push that idea forward that it's so important to, to be physically fit, not only for yourself, but for your job. It helps you think more clearly. It helps reduce your anxiety. Each time you exercise, it's kind of like a, a little boost or burst of like positive emotions. And for me too, it's also helped me calm myself down a lot too. And then also like when I exercise, I feel more productive. Um, and that, that's probably attributed to more my more happier mood. Now, when you do start your fitness journey, you might be thinking that you have to do all this important stuff, but the whole key is just to get started. So one thing I wanna remind everybody of is that comparison is a thief of joy. That was said by uh, Theodore Roosevelt, but Basically, just remember throughout your whole fitness journey, you want to never compare your, your progress to other people's progress. As long as you're getting better every single day, improving your performance from the past, I consider that a victory, and you should too. And just remember that consistency is the name of the game. As long as you remain consistent and show up every day, that's more important than one workout, right? You don't have to do everything perfectly. You can just be consistent and you're going to just destroy the goals you have for, for yourself in a good way. And obviously physical fitness makes you more healthier, more disciplined, gives you a better mood and attitude that helps you be more productive. But again, consistency is the key thing here. So in the past, um, I've had bad workout days, <laughs> and meaning that like I only showed up to the gym for 10 or 15 minutes. Um, I think one time I only showed up for nine minutes, but the, the whole key is like just me showing up, making it a consistent habit where it feels weird that you're not going to the gym. And you, you should allow yourself the permission to have bad workouts or have workouts where they don't necessarily like feel good uh, from like a mood perspective or like a progress perspective, but at least you, as long as you show up, that's what matters. And for example, I'm running right now, I'm, or at least getting into running. And one of the stories that kind of popped out for me in the book I'm reading to educate myself a little bit more about running. So one of the books I'm reading right now, Run Right Now, What a Half Century on the Run Has Taught by Joe Henderson. Uh, one of the kind of paragraphs I read that I really liked a lot was, um, allow yourself to walk um, from time to time and not run continuously. So especially in our, our modern times it feels like you have to be on the go or hustle all the time but especially with your fitness goals the whole point is just to start and be consistent to keep on running and not kind of just give you an example a lot of people kind of feel pressured to like run farther or like i'm not sure everyone's been on some type of run where we see someone ahead of us and we want to run a little bit more forward um, to like impress them or maybe it's a little competitive thing but the whole thing is just to allow yourself to take the walk and run for longer, long-term, if that makes sense. 
Um, you don't want to go 100% every single day. It's fine to go in a walking state with whatever your goal is and take a breath as long as you show up consistently. And this kind of illustrated in the book uh, for this anecdote. Um, so a runner named Kenneth Quetchelow once ran from Los Angeles to San Francisco, which is roughly 500 miles. Joe Henderson, the author of the running book I was mentioning before, asked him how he prepared for that run. He responded, I wouldn't do any special training. That would take the whole sport out of it. The challenge to me was to do this totally unprepared as any man on the street might. Incredulous, Joe asked him, how could you run 50 miles a day for 10 days straight? Few trained runners can even go that far in one day. Kenneth responded, you want to know my secret? I don't hurry. I don't run very far at one time, only a mile or so. And then I walk for a while. And then I run some more and walk again. It takes me the whole bloody day, but I get there. And that's the nugget I, I get from, from this, especially with goals. You don't have to go 100% with every single type of workout, whether it be yoga, running, or lifting. In your whole life, as you're like striving for more goals, not just fitness goals, and as Joe Henderson says, take walks so you'll run and keep running forever. Take it easy some days as long as you're consistent so you can do that goal every single day and do it better and do it long term. All that matters is as long as you're moving forward in, in comparison to yourself, to your own performance. That's all that matters. You're, you're building up that endurance and becoming the type of person you want to be. So give yourself the permission to have a bad workout as long as you show up. I'm not saying bad form, uh, but I, I mean, give yourself the permission to, to not be perfect in your workout or your own personal goals. So that might mean, like me, only working out <laughs> on a certain uh, like arm day or something for 10, 15 minutes, but as long as I build up the habit and show up consistently, I'm more likely to work out and show up every single day. So those little moments help you build up your discipline and make it uh, more likely that you're gonna keep on working out for the rest of your life or whatever your goal is. Just keep on showing up. And another thing this reminded me of was uh, one of James Clear's uh, blogs on the importance of, of this uh, permission to, I wouldn't necessarily say fail, but to give yourself some leeway as long as you're consistent. So I'll read an excerpt from his blog. Cutting yourself some slack becomes even more important when we consider the science of behind habit formation and continual improvement. Research shows that regardless of the habit that you want, you're working to build, missing a single day has no measurable impact on your long-term success. In other words, it's all about the average speed, not maximum speed. Daily failures are red lights during a road trip. And just remember the Joe Henderson quote, walk every once in a while so you can run and keep on running. Think long-term rather than short-term. So you might be asking yourself, how do I even exercise? What do I start? It could be something as simple as walking, um, something as simple as walking five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes a day, and every single week adding a couple minutes. But by the end of a couple of weeks, you'll be walking for long periods of time. Maybe it's yoga. Maybe it's lifting. And I'll include some lifting um, programs as well for beginners. Uh, but yeah, just start, do some research, hire a personal trainer for proper form um, or to learn the basics. And as long as you show up consistently, you're going to get better. Also, selfishly, you should want to work out because you're going to get to be able to live longer, to spend more time with your friends and family to be the shoulder they can cry on or you can listen to them or cra uh, crack a crash joke with your, your buddies or impact the world by being there longer, uh, by leaving a legacy. And you can't do that if you prematurely die. That's the importance of physical fitness, being able to stay here longer and do more things, to uh, make more memories with, with your friends and family and the people that matter in your life. So I'm gonna leave you guys uh, with one of my favorite excerpts from a essay from Henry Rollins. It's called Iron and Soul, but I, I think it, it encapsulates kind of philosophically why physical fitness is important. So I believe that when the body is strong, the mind thinks strong thoughts. The iron is the best antidepressant I have ever found. There is no better way to fight weakness than with strength. Once the mind and body have been awakened to the true potential, it's impossible to turn back. The iron never lies to you. You can walk outside and listen to all kinds of talk. 
get told that you're a god or a total bastard. The iron will always kick your, you the real deal. The iron is the great reference point, the all-knowing perspective giver. Thank you guys for um, watching this video and hope you have a great day.